Okay, we're going to look at removing a brake caliper. Now, if you have an early bay, there is a slight difference between that and a later bay caliper, but the principle is exactly the same. Now, you might be taking a caliper off to repair it or to replace it, and also you might need to just take it off prior to taking off the brake disc. It's a very straightforward procedure, and you only need three tools, and that's a 19mm socket and some kind of turning device, a 19mm spanner, and finally an 11mm spanner and you may find that the special brake 11mm spanner, which is a ring spanner with a small portion missing, will help out tremendously. So we're looking at our caliper here, and that's how you'd see it. That's the outside of the vehicle, and this is inside. You'd need to peer your head round. If we uh, turn it over and identify a couple of things, there's the bleed nipple that will be important at some stage, and most importantly, what we're looking at here is where the brake hard line screws in. That's what the 11mm spanner's for, and most importantly, the two 19mm bolts here. So it's a simple case of getting inside and undoing it. Now you may need to use a spanner because you might not be able to get the socket on it, but no major problem. But one thing to look out for is the difference between the two bolts. Now the lower one is threaded all the way along and the upper one has a shank portion on there but just so you don't get them confused, you will not actually be able to fit this one in. And if you have an early bay, then the caliper bolts themselves are a slightly different size. Okay, in this instance, we're gonna take the caliper out of the way so that we can take the disc off, so we don't need to disconnect the brake lines themselves. Now, on this later bay, we can actually fit a socket in there, okay? A quick tap down, and it's a case of undoing the bolt. And then onto the lower one. And if you leave that lower bolt in position just for a moment, because what we need to do is now take out the retaining clip that holds the metal to flexi connector together out. I prefer to use mole grips for this, but you might be able to use pliers. It's just nice to lock it off so that it's on there. We're fortunate here this one's moving, but you may need to tap it with a hammer. It literally pulls out like that. Put that down there. Now be careful because these metal brake lines can be fragile. You just need to push it up a little bit. Nice and gently and then push it out the way, being careful not to bend the metal brake line too much. And then it's a simple case of just undoing the bottom bolt the last few turns. And this is where keeping a wheel handy is a good idea because you should be able to rest the caliper down on the wheel. Okay, so it's a simple case. Now the caliper is removed and uh, safely perched on the edge of the wheel, which of course is our friend, the six mil Allen key. There's a couple of cap head bolts here. Just need to go in, surprise it, and it will come off nicely. Again, make sure we keep those bolts somewhere safe. Spin it round if you prefer. And it's that little wiggle maneuver we need again. Now there is a chance that it's rusted in place. You might need to give it a tap with a copper hide mallet, but just move it all around. And as long as nobody's marmalized your dust cap previously, it should slide off there nicely as well. It's as simple as that. So you can give it a good inspection, or if you're just gonna go straight ahead and replace the disc, get the new one ready. It's a good idea whilst we're at this stage to give the backing plate a good cleaning down, give it a good inspection. If you need to, you can fit the brand new ones that we've already seen from Just Campers. And of course, your wheel bearings, the outers and the inners are just in here. It's a simple case of removing the speedo retaining clip and taking the dust cover off. Okay, fresh pair of gloves on then. And if you do get any greasy fingerprints on here, just a quick squirt with the degreaser. Clean them off, a little wiggle, 
and we're ready to put the two bolts into position. And again, it's a six mil Allen key. And as ever, refer to your manual for your model specific torque settings. So fitting back on, very straightforward, just pick it up. Again, being careful not to put that metal line under any undue stress or bend it unnecessarily. Otherwise you'll need to look up how to fit one of those. The wheel is your friend. We've already got the bolts handy. Remember the fully threaded one on a later bay goes into the bottom. You may need to get your head inside. Hopefully it's nice and clean and you're not going to get too much muck in your hair. And this is another one of those jobs where you've got to fiddle around a little bit and eventually you'll locate it. You may find if these bolts were a little rusty, a quick whiz off with a wire brush and a little bit of copper grease, just a tiny bit on there to ease you taking them off the next time. Again, wiggling's a secret. The last thing to do, and again being very careful with the metal hard line, is just ease it back in. Let the pipe do the work for you, you're just guiding it. Push it down, you can see the slot here that the little spring clip goes in, you push it all the way down. And then put it curly bit facing down. Feed it in and we're lucky it's gone in in one. Sometimes you might need to give it a gentle tap with a hammer, but that's it. All back on board. <laughs>